Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on the Schematic Local Government Scene. The schematic Local Government Scene is a level of detail to 3D scene that includes the world topographic map draped over detailed elevation along with LOD2 buildings, building floors and trees. High density LiDAR and building footprints are required to create 3D buildings and the 3D trees. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a last data set from our last files. You can select one file and then remove the file name in the dialog box and that um, will give you the folder. And then we need to set the projected coordinate system of the last data set. In this case, if you search for 1201 and select that coordinate system, we get the correct last data set. And you notice here that the, um, the points are a bit too big, so you can go under symbology and make them a bit smaller. So now we're ready to create elevation surfaces from our last data set. We enter the last data set, uh, we can set the cell size. The default is based on the average point spacing in the LiDAR. And we can also decide whether or not we want to classify noise. We can set the minimum height below the ground and the maximum height above the ground. And anything outside that range will be classified as noise. The result of the tool is that we end up with three elevation surfaces, a TTM, a DSM, and a normalized DSM. And if we want to, we can modify the DTM using our building footprints. This will make our resulting 3D buildings sit better on the DTM. You can choose the modification type. You can set it to mean. This is the average height of the DTM within the building footprints. And to view it, we must add this modified DTM to our ground surface. Sometimes you need to refresh the geodatabase, but once you've done that, you can add it to the ground. And if we have a closer look, we can see here that the ETM has indeed been modified with the building footprints. So next up, we're going to publish our elevation surface. Um, for this, we need the Z values to be meters. And also, uh, the projection needs to be web Mercator. So we use the tools to achieve this. And then we, um, we're not ready yet to publish because we also need to add this surface to the ground in order to be able to publish. it. So you add, add it twice, but one, one is only for um, publishing. So once it's been added to the ground, we can right click on it and we can Give it a name, give it a summary and tags. Then under configuration, you can set the level of detail and also the load compression. The load compression drives the accuracy of the resulting published terrain. And we typically set it at 0.05 or less. So we'll let that publish, and then we're ready to pre-process our building footprints. Some building footprints may contain several different roof types and roof parts, and to accurately re represent these buildings, you need to split the building footprints into separate features before extracting the roof forms. We have two tools, one's called Split Features. This one's very useful if you have split features that dele delineate difference in, in height. Uh, between the buildings, for example, in dense urban areas. So as you can see here, there are differences in elevation within the building footprints. So if we use our split features, in this case, these are parcels, um, then we can split our building footprints using those parcels. can also create a feature class that can help with the splitting. 
But in this case, like I said, especially in dense urban areas, building passes works really well. So if we select our building footprints and our split features, um, we use our parcels. And we can set a minimum split size. This defines the um, minimum area of the resulting polygons. We'll let it run. So as you can see now, we end up with building footprints that have been nicely split along those parcel boundaries. Now we can also use um, another methodology. And in this case, we're going to use differences in elevation value in the DSM to segment our building footprints. So you can run this sequentially. As you can see, within certain build, building footprints, there are still differences, quite significant differences in elevation. So we'll use the segment buildings using elevation tool to uh, do further segmentation. So we enter our building footprints. These are the ones that already have had splitting. And then we enter our DSM. You can use the default parameters here, but you can also play with the parameters, have a look in the online documentation, uh, how they affect the segmentation process. But then we end up with a, another feature class where we first have split it, the building footprints, and then segmented them as well by differences in height elevation. So now we're ready to create our LED2 buildings. So we enter our process building footprints, a DSM, a DTM, and a normalized DSM. We give a name for the resulting feature class. Again, here are a number of parameters that you can play with. Have a look in the online documentation as to how they affect the outcome of the create LED2 buildings process. The outcome of this process is a polygon feature class that has a procedural rule attached to it, um, creating the 3D building forms. And as you can see here, if we compare it with the LiDAR, um, we did a very good uh, initial run uh, with extracting the building forms. You can see that the segmentation here picked up certain features in the roofs. As said, using those parameters, you can play with which features it should pick up and which ones it shouldn't. But as you can see here, it didn't pick up one feature here in this roof. So let's, you know, we don't need to go and check every single building. Let's use confidence measurement to give, give us an indication of how well the automatic extraction went. So when you run this tool, what you'll end up with is a colorized 2D picture glass that gives an indication of how well the extraction went. So if we put them side by side, you can see indeed in this area, so red means extraction hasn't gone very well. You can see here that we have an issue that automatic segmentation and also splitting didn't solve. So now we need to go in and manually modify the building footprints here so we get a good roof at the end. So what we can do here is that the segmentation actually did its job, but it didn't, didn't pick up the correct height. So the only thing we need to do here is change the height attribute in the procedural rule, in the symbology of that layer, and we can see that it's been updated. Now let's have a look at another example. So in this case here, we can see that the segmentation didn't pick up different uh, differences in height. 
So what we can do now here is we can go and do manual segmentation. It's easiest to do this in 2D, in the 2D view. So we're segmenting the building here along the height differences that we see in the DSM. And then we update the attributes of these newly formed segments. So in this case, the rule form will stay the same, but we're just going to update the building height. And as you can see, now we better represent uh, the building better represent the LiDAR data. In this case here, the building form is not correct. Let's make it a flat roof and change the building height as well. So that's good for now. And before we move on, we should save our changes. Nothing we can do is we can color our buildings. We can change the color of the facade and also the color of the roofs. And again, this is just simply changing a parameter in the rule that is driving the symbolization. So if we go to the layer properties, there we can change the roof color and or also the facade color. So now we're ready to publish. But before we publish, we must also uh, decide whether or not we want to fuse our segments. So in certain cases, you can imagine you segment a building footprint that is one building into different roof segments, then we want to fuse these together. But you can also decide that you want to fuse on your original building footprints. So then you would pick, as we did here, the attribute pre-split ID, that is the original building footprint before we did any pre-processing. So here we have our buildings, and we can see now for this building, the segments have been fused back together into one building, and now we're ready to publish our buildings. Before we do this, um, we must make sure that the scene coordinate system is in Web Mercator, but we only have to do this when we want to publish to a global scene. If you publish to a local scene, this is not necessary. But if you want to publish to a global scene, you must make sure that the coordinate system of the scene in ArcGIS Pro is in Web Mercator. Now we already have multi patch features because we fused the buildings. So we can skip this step and then we can publish our buildings. So we give it a proper name, summary tag. And then we can decide whether or not we want to publish locally or uh, on the server. And it's a decision you can make yourself. So buildings are publishing. So let's go to creating 3D trees, schematic trees. We use the last data set as input. Um, vegetation has not been classified in this LiDAR, so we'll use one as our uh, vegetation class code. We leave the default settings in this case, and we run, and we end up with our schematic trees.
So what we can do now as well, of course, is publish our trees. Goes in the same way as publishing the buildings. Just select the layer in the table of contents. Give it a good name, summary and tags, and publish. And one other step we can do in the schematic local government scene is to create building floors. Now, if you have a look on the online documentation, there is help about how to create building floors and how the process works and how you can create floors and floor volumes. We won't go into it in, in too much in detail in this tutorial. And also on the online documentation, there's background information on how the roof extraction works. And we recommend having a read through this documentation because it explains um, how the extraction actually works. So we've published our elevation, our trees, and our buildings to our ArcGIS account. And then we can load it up into a web scene. And we can see here, this is our modified ETM. And then we'll load in the buildings and also the 3D trees. We can also capture a few slides. These are bookmarks in our 3D scene, which gets saved when we save our web scene. We can turn on shadows. And then we save our schematic local government scene. And that's it. Thank you for watching this tutorial.